done it. I married a cross-dresser. Really? I married a cross-dressing, tattooed, drug-addicted bigamist with multiple personality disorders. How's that? Don't give me that look. You're the one that went it tasteless and vulgar. I'm just trying to help you out. I want real, okay? Something with a little bit more edge than accessories for fall. What, Erica doesn't have an edge? Erica needs to stretch a little. Why? We're, we rule the time slot. The Corinth serial murders. Oh, great. Something family-oriented. I see a Thanksgiving special. No, I think we need something a little hard-hitting after the infidelity show. Uh, who's on the schedule I'll for... I'll get the schedule. Thank you. October, right? November. All right. So you're a history buff, huh? Well, I think I might have been if I hadn't had Birkin for three terms. The first wave of Puritan migration... Set the American personality in stall. I'm sorry, is this is a private conversation, or can anybody reminisce? No, not at all. Uh, Tad Martin, this is Michael Delaney. Hi, damn glad to know you. Yeah, you too. Trevor's brother-in-law, we've met, what, two hundred times? hundred times, at least. Right. Trevor? <laughs> you have been gone a long time. Perhaps too long. Well, listen, if you'd like a lesson on Pine Valley social history, maybe we should pencil in that lunch. Um, maybe not. I got a lot of cafeteria duty to do, you know. Well, there's always breakfast. Let me know. Um, call me if you have any questions. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> Hardy, Hardy, har 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 har. Very funny. About career day. Um, <laughs> I'll okay. see you. See you later. Okay, bye. Good night. Take care, Mike. Okay. What's tonight, if I may ask? Pine Valley High School Harvest Dance. Very funny. I'm not kidding. Dixie and I are supposed to chaperone. What is the world coming to? Tad Martin patrolling our youth. Yeah, the old ball and chain thought we'd head over there on 10 o'clock, passed out some condoms. It's a joke, by the Will Michael's wife be there? No, actually, Michael's, uh, not married. Really? Yeah, you're gonna have to work on that, though. What? Will Michael's wife be there? I don't know what you're babbling about. Don't you have work to do? You want to cut the makeover segment for love addicts? Anything but 21st century eyeliner. Liza? Liza Colby! Oh, Dr. Martin, it's so good to see you. Indeed. Yeah. I had no idea you were back in town. How long will you be staying? Until Hollywood calls, Dad. Let me introduce WRCW's new station manager. Well, I, I didn't know you were up for the job. It was a last-minute development. I beat Tad by a hair. Well, congratulations. I'm sure your mother's very proud. Well, you know, Mother. Uh, listen, I have some calls I have to make, if you'll excuse me. Big trouble, Pop. Yeah, I can see. Oh, no, I wasn't talking about Liza. So far, that's going quite well, actually. You must be very disappointed. Oh, believe me, right now, that's the least of our worries. Yeah. Well, my service said it was an emergency. What's going on? You heard from Kate. No, I mean, Father's uh, Day card. To my grandfather, a thought to cherish through the years. Memories come and memories go, but trust bonds are forever. <laughs> I always liked that, kid. Anything said? No, no, what's what's wrong? Well, I don't want you and Mom to freak out, okay? Don't go around calling out the Marines, but, uh... Apparently, Kate has run away from the Greeley School again, and it's not the first time, according to Tara. Well, I know, uh, Tara was very tense during a few phone calls I've had. When did it happen? I don't know, I haven't got the details. Uh, Charlie got the SOS. After all, she is his little sister. He's out there trying to track her down right now. Well, oh, looks like our little Kate is turning out to be quite a handful. It's to sound unreasonable, but this does not sound like a medical emergency. Well, I, I, could, I could care less how it sounds. Well, I'm sure that we can come up with some sort of an agreement that's good for Erica and the show. Damn this show! Are you speaking for Erica? Listen carefully, I'm going to speak slowly so you understand. Erica's on vacation. No, Erica is not. Oh, in other words, you're indifferent to Erica's physical and emotional uh, 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 pain. Is that in the I think I made myself very clear. Hey, guys, Eric. what's going on? Erica needs time off to cope with exhaustion, anxiety. Mr. Merrick, I think the best thing that you can do is to make sure your wife gets a good night's sleep. Because if she doesn't show up here tomorrow, WRCW will be forced to take legal action.
All right, let's all stay cool, not lose our heads. After all, there are ways to resolve uh, conflict uh, without lobbing uh, more heads. Uh, legal action? She has a contract, a very lucrative agreement with WRCW that actually requires her to show up and to perform on schedule. Tad, would you please get the schedule? I don't give a damn about your schedule. Who does she think she is? The station manager, my boss. Merrick would like us to believe that our star is suffering from a nervous breakdown and wants an indefinite leave of absence. <sighs> Just a few weeks. Tad, she's not taking care of herself. She, she's forgotten to eat. Her, her blood pressure's low. She fainted when she got home. I'm sorry to hear that. But she's under uh, the gun. Wait, Tad, wait, she wait, has wait, got wait, to slow down. First things first. Did she see a doctor? Her personal physician and Maria both took And will you out. please tell him what they said? No food, hunger, exhaustion caused her to faint. All she needs is a good night's nice rest. Oh, come on, lady, you are trying my patience. I think what Liza's trying to say... I don't care know. what she's trying to say. The fact is, my wife's health is my primary concern. Now, she will not report to work tomorrow. She will not perform on command. And when she's well enough to return, I'll let you know. Uh, Dimitri. No, let him go. Mr. Merrick, if Erica doesn't show up here tomorrow, she's in breach of contract. And she may not have a job to come back to. You call your lawyers. I suggest you remember one thing. Yes. This television station and its money cow, the cutting edge with Erica Kane. It may be your whole life. But it's, it's not you, you may have misinterpreted a couple of things, Eliza. Uh, she has more career opportunities than time to consider. My wife doesn't need this job. So we'll see you in court. Dimitri, come, please. Well, they're made for each other. What do you think? What do I think? I think you couldn't have possibly handled that worse if you tried. Well, I hope you don't have plans this evening. As a matter of fact, I do. Then you'll be canceling them. Because I think we're going to be here all night. Work all night to fix this mess that Erica's gotten into, so be it. Liza, don't jump the gun. We can jerry-rig next week's shows, but we got to do something about the cutting edge. We need a new host. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. It hasn't gone anywhere near that far yet. Nothing is set in stone, nothing is definite. We can still talk some sense into Erica. Yeah, you heard her husband. Yeah, I did. You ticked him off. Besides, yeah. who cares? He's not a mouthpiece. You could go home, she finds out he was here, she gives him hell. Let us pray. Yeah, well, praying is not going to pay the payroll. Well, Iris, could you send Jason in, please? I need to think about dinner. Any recommendations? Serving spoons still in business? Yeah. yeah really? Cool. Jason, we need to order some dinner. Pasta? Salad? Fine. Okay. Red sticks, cheese on the side, unless, mm -hmm. of course, you're still a meat potatoes man. No, cheese is fine. Great. Could you order dinner for us? Sure. Actually, um, I'll phone it in and I'll tell the guard on the way out, but uh, Rudy asked me to cover the high school dance tonight. Oh, that's right. Right. Well, it's my uh, first solo assignment, so wish me luck. Yeah, I will. Wish okay. me luck. Thanks, Miss Colby. Uh, you'll order the dinner? Yeah. See you tomorrow. Great. Yeah. No one's answering at the high school office. I'll just have to try again. So... You think we should give Eric another chance? I certainly do. Okay, you win. We'll take a copy of her contract, we'll go to her house, and we'll confront her. Confront? Yes. We'll show her the contract, we'll say strict adherence to all clauses or dismissal. Fisher cut bait, I mean, come on. Did you take psychology in high school? Because your interpersonal skills need a tune-up, just a little tweak. Huh. You have a better idea. Yeah, I do. A good night's sleep for all parties concerned. If we wake up tomorrow, things might look different. Yeah, it might have been good enough. All right, then, fine. Tomorrow, bright and early, you and I will go out and cut ourselves a couple of fresh olive branches, take them over there and try to smooth things over. I know, Erica, she'll come back to work. Trust me. And if not? If not. If I am wrong and you are right, then you win. Tomorrow and tomorrow only, I will take her place in oh, front of the camera. That's great. It's mm -hmm. great. You've done it before, and you could do it again. America yeah. loves what, you. Whatever. I just want to be sure on one thing, okay? It is for tomorrow and tomorrow only. After that, we get Erica back ASAP. We cannot do... Wait a minute. Wait. The tomorrow. That's the thing you with the adultery and the infidelity, right? Why is it? Come on. You want me to do a show about cheating? marital treachery cheating husbands and wives stabbing each other in the back over what sex 
money, drugs and alcohol. These are subjects that our audiences are not bored by. And Haley Vaughn is a perfect example. Yeah, well, why do we have to rub her face? Ah, uh, the famous Tad Martin conscience rears his ugly head. Liza, where's the sport in kicking somebody who's already down? Come on. Your friend Haley's CEO of Enchantment, right? Major corporation. With nervous stockholders due to the juicy adultery bit. I'm sure she would love a chance to clear the air. She's a public figure. Public figures do not have private lives of their own. Let's admit it. And this is a business. A business in which you cannot have a soft heart. And you also should be praying that Erica comes back to host the show. She's the expert on adultery. Although, you're no slouch either. Liza. It's true. I had to hear it from Enid Nelson, of all people. But here you are, back in Pine Valley. I can't understand why you wouldn't even tell your own mother. <coughs> Hi, Mary. Tad. Oh, well. Now perhaps I do understand. This boy here has become quite the devoted family man. Yes, Mother, I've been... Brought up to speed on Ted's personal life. Did you know that he literally came back from the dead to be reunited with the woman he loves? I mean, Ted and Dixie's storybook romance has become a local legend. I mean, a love like theirs comes along once in a lifetime. A love that um, others only dream of. We have work to do. Mind? Oh, darling, what a treat. It's rare that I get to see two consummate pros in action. Excuse me, not that this isn't oodles of fun, but we are busy. If Erica does decide to form those shows... Oh, Erica, temperamental diva to the end. I have complete faith in our lineup, no matter who hosts the show. I know the perfect replacement. Forget it. The FCC will never approve you for the airwaves. Oh, not me, darling. Dixie. Come again? Your wife, Dixie Cooney Martin. Oh, what a name to wrap a show around. Have you been drinking? Darling, it's inspired. Dixie's already got a built-in audience. She's known for her grit and spirit. She's uh, the renowned spokesperson for the downtrodden, crusader for victims' rights. Who is a full-time mother, student, and hospital liaison, has no spare time for the talk show circuit. Darling, the timing is perfect. Janet Green is back among the living. Oh, did you know the brave, noble Dixie led a whole one-woman campaign to drive that convicted murderer from our midst? Marion, um, Dixie and I have decided to ignore Jen. Oh, you're a plucky little wife. is hardly the type to bury her head in the sand. We're moving on. Oh, don't be so hasty, darling. She'd add a touch of class to this tacky gab. We are not, I repeat, not going to do coffee talk with my wife and the crowbar killer, period. End of discussion. If you'll excuse us, Mother... We have a pre-production meeting for oh, tomorrow. What titillating tidbit you have to tempt your audience with. Oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> Marital infidelity. The crowded bedroom. Oh, well. well I guess three is definitely a crowd. Say goodnight, Mother. Why the bums rush, darling? Is there a... Magic or mischief in the air? Hmm? Excuse us. Liza and I are right in the middle of a scheduling crisis. Neither one of us has the time nor the energy for your off-the-wall insinuations or tired innuendo. Oh, you have to love a man who can use insinuation and innuendo in the same sentence. Please, please oh, give us a break. Mea culpa, darling. Mea maxima culpa. I can see you're champing at the bit to get home to the bosom of your family. Um, but there's no one for you to rush off to, is there, my darling, unmarried daughter? You still are, aren't you? Single, I mean. Blissfully. Oh, you know, last I heard you were uh, at some local station in Frostbite Falls. Did you manage to find a social life? A company bowling team? Frequent pledge breaks? Of a certain age, one can't help but look back nostalgically. The French are right, you know. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Night, darlings. Don't work too hard. We have the lineup.
script all set. Yep, script is ready. All we need is a host. Well, don't look at me, baby. My gig is definitely behind the camera. Why don't you do it? Oh, please. I had the show oh. before the cutting edge. I had the weekend report. I got the 4 o'clock news. Okay, okay, I get the idea. So, who do we know that's cheap and available? Marion! Don't you dare. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's such a low blow. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I apologize, all right? No, thank the you. bottom of my heart. <laughs> so, seriously, who do we know that's available? Who can we use? <laughs> I know Chef Larry. 45 minutes of non-fat cookware. Oh! Oh! Liza, what about Coco? Coco the class? Yes! Coco and Liza Bungalow? Yes! <laughs> yes! No, seriously! We could do a fashion segment. Breakaway pants. Clown kitsch. Or timeless No, pants. no, no. Not enough edge. Not enough edge. You're the one that wants down and dirty. I say we do that infidelity segment. No, something <laughs> sexual. Something really seedy. Imagine. No, think about it. Something really oh, weird can please. happen between those little cars with 27 midgets jet. and a bottle of seltzer. <laughs> I dream about something like that happening. Seriously. <laughs> what I could do with 27 midgets and a bottle of seltzer. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hi. Oh. Always leave them laughing. Oh. No. This is the first one we've had ever. Honey, come on. Ever. <laughs> Hi, oh, sweetie. We were just, uh... Losing it. We that was it. We it. were losing it. That's probably... Yeah. We were. Yeah. Erica giving you grief? Oh, in a word, yes. Uh-huh. But we've done all the damage control we can do, so... Yes, now we'll be praying to the lady of soundstage three. Hey, what happened, uh... I, the dance can't be over already, right? No, it's not. Well, don't tell me there's trouble in the gym. A rumble. Sharks <laughs> versus the gym. No, um, Janet Green showed up. Needless to say, we had words. What did Janet Green want at a high school dance? She said she was checking up on Laura Kirk. Hmm. You didn't buy it. No. But I think I may have uh, overreacted just a little bit. Well, sweetheart, after everything she's done to us in the past, you had every right to freeze. I'm not scared or anything. I just feel a little silly. You know. This Janet Green sounds like quite a character. You have no idea. Cross between Ma Barker and Lizzie Borden. Maybe we should have her on as a guest. No, I thought we <laughs> killed that particular suggestion. Hmm. Not dead, just wounded. Mm-hmm. Well, if uh, we're all finished here, uh, there's no problems back at the uh, gym. I say you and I head back to the high school. What do you think, huh? Yeah. No problems, good. no food fights, no makeout sessions in the equipment room? Nope. Good. Then settle up, you teen wrangler, you. Have fun. We are out of here. <laughs> yep. Tonight we eat, drink, be merry for tomorrow. Nice to see you again, Liza. You too.